God. But I told you that blue ain't no joke, man. Yeah, man. yeah. yeah I was tell- I was like, we-, we were talking about it while you were getting ready for the podcast. And I was like, yeah, man. Bro, we've been picking up your audio. Yeah, it's-, <laughs> it's picking you up <laughs> right now. It's picking you up like, perfectly. Perfectly, right. Like- is mirror mirror here and we're back with another ill conversation i don't know if you guys know this guest but he's not even a guest no more it's like home now because i'm i'm in a whole different space with it you know this is an in first in person with my boy jay bro what's good with you man what's happening bro what's happening what's yeah, yeah, happening? yeah 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 you know staying easy staying blessed you know what i'm saying staying out the way don't mind the audio y'all you know this is a first time type of thing but we're gonna learn as we go we're gonna learn as we grow um this is my first time hearing myself in the ears. I don't know. I know I've been a little giggly and everything, but I needed to get that out of my system probably, I think, man. Uh, um, man, it's good seeing you again and having you uh, invite me here, bro. And um, the first in-person episode, this is special, man. Um, I wasn't really expecting it to be like this, but I knew it was going to get started. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go too much into myself, but... um. Man, I've seen you shaped into not just the stories you told me with your mom and you your upbringing and everything, but now you being the leader that I see you becoming, bro. Like that, that's different. Oh yeah, most definitely, bro. It's definitely uh, <clears throat> I say it's been it's, it's it's definitely been a journey, man. Like if I had to describe it like that, yeah, I I I definitely say that, and you know. Kind of like you said, we you know we just we just continue growing each and every day, man. But I'm happy to be in this space. I'm happy that you know what I'm saying people like you, my family, my homies, mm-hmm. everybody can notice it because it's like yo, my my first intention with you know just actually being diligent, with yeah, staying busy and becoming a leader, and you know what I'm saying staying focused on getting things done and separating myself from the crowd was really just so everybody else could uh. You know, just had those experiences that yeah. we, we we never been able to get a hold of mm-hmm. for the most part. You know, so I definitely appreciate you for the most part. Oh, no, no, you know man, I saying? appreciate you. It's on your it's, time, dog. Like <clears throat> y'all understand? Like yeah. we go back, man. Like I know we didn't talk much in high school, but the conversations we shared on the field and then up to our, our adulthood, I'm, I very much appreciate that, man. And uh, yeah. to hear that, like I'm I'm very happy for you and making those choices, man. And um. I always seen it in you from our even our last conversation. I know it, it's a long time guest, man. You know he was on season two. Well, I mean, I know I started this way back on IG Love, man. But you know, I, I ain't gonna get too loud. I was like, damn, I can hear myself. This, Bro, this you. shit picking it up. I oh appreciate you letting us use your equipment too, and I appreciate our cameraman type savvy work. Like he going crazy back there, man. <laughs> appreciate you, bro. Like. Y'all really looking out, man, and I knew once people, when I put that first one out, including the clips, I was like, man, it's great to see Amir back. It's great. But I'm not just back. Like I said, I'm better. I know I already gave that whole speech and everything. I'm not going to go too crazy like I did. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's not an ego thing, y'all. I just recognize how great I was. I don't need nobody to tell me how great I am. You don't need nobody to tell you how great you are. You just let the results speak for itself, man. And, um... That's just through the action, you know what I'm saying? I know we could talk, talk, talk. That's all people can do nowadays, it seems like. But 
you got to actually have something to bring to the table. What I bring is conversation. But it's so good to have you back here. I'm going to put this soundboard to use, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. So, I got a couple questions I might want to ask you. I know this is a new segment that I like to do in the show. I did it in the last episode, but you probably didn't see it. So, then, man, you know something? I'll hit you with some either or questions. You just go with either answer. I'm just coming off the top. Um, discipline or motivation? Mm. I'm going to definitely say discipline. Man. Mm. And <clears throat> just to elaborate on it briefly, um, yeah, but this discipline is gonna be is gonna be there regardless. Like, yeah, discipline is just you being able to 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 make the decision every day to do the things that you don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, not to not to deteriorate too much or to go on too much of a tangent. You mind if I do for you? Go ahead. Know? That's what this space is for, yeah. bro. Keep it raw. <clears throat> but you know, like I said, you know, between the, between a year and like year and a half, mm -hmm. with me you haven't seen each other, things like that. Like I said, a lot has changed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, me personally, I've definitely took that step to continue to grow mm -hmm. my faith and <clears throat> just develop my relationship with God, you yeah. know, becoming a Christian and staying into the church and everything more. So, you know, whenever I look at, at discipline, you know, it's like, man, you know, I don't, I don't know if how many people understand exactly what it's like to be a Christian and follow God and everything like that. Follow but God, yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you first get into it, it looks at it kind of like that this whole spiel of just rules, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, sh I'm sure you understand how, how it's like with Christians, like <clears throat> our elders, grandma, grandparents, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. they're telling us about the yeah. Bible, like, you know what I'm saying, don't cuss, don't do all that cussing, you know what I'm saying, don't wear it is, don't be drinking, don't be smoking, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, when you get into it for yourself, it looks like this list of rules and mm -hmm. do's and don'ts. It's different when you're actually in it versus, oh, I'm just going to read this book for myself. And that's for any given yeah. general religion or spirituality of that. And uh, I know you really wanted to get into that whole spiritual side of things that has enlightened you into the man you are today. And, is, you mm -hmm. know, um, we're not all politics and everything, y'all. So cut the bullshit. We're going to talk our motherfucking shit. we just who we are. You know what I'm saying? Our upbringing yeah. and everything and the things that bring us uh value whether that's in faith or whether that's with a lot of god or whoever that may be it's just um the nature of who you are you know what i'm saying and what works in your life i can respect that you know what yeah. i'm saying um you you actually live that and embody that bro and uh <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna put that to use, yes sir. Okay, I'm not sorry for the cutoff, but I no, 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 you good, that. bro. But yeah, but I don't, the only reason I bring that up is because, like, you know, just just with taking that with taking that major step and making that major decision to, to mm -hmm. just follow Christ in general, discipline. It's like it it takes a lot of discipline because, like, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Especially whenever I first made the decision that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow Christ. I'm gonna get into my word. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a dedicated Christian. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna focus solely on growing my relationship with yeah. God. It was like it felt it. I mean, it, it requires you to just completely change. It can, it requires you because it puts it in the Bible that you have to die to self. Mm -hmm. And dying to self is basically releasing everything of your old self or your old life and becoming new. Basically, you know what I'm saying. That's why they tell you to be a born again Christian. Yeah make me new again <clears throat> exactly. um, for some people that if they're not in christianity that might be ego death or that might look like letting go of <clears throat> things and recognizing you will make mistakes or in your mm -hmm. uh uh taste it would be uh we're, we're sinners yeah. basically we're, oh. we're not everybody's gonna make mistakes as you get older you know what i'm saying but that's part of learning in this human experience because yeah. if you just think oh good 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 if i'm a christian then everything good is gonna no 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 that path and how that relationship for you between you and god is between you and him you know what i'm saying that, and it's different for everybody else yeah. and i'm not just speaking on christianity i'm just thinking on on speaking on things whatever you do get involved with you know what i'm saying because I've, I've, I've you know i was raised up in the christian side family and everything but um I've always been the outside of the box type of kid. Like, respectfully, yeah, that's what I knew growing up. But I expanded <clears throat> my horizons on, okay, why did this culture learn this way and this, this, this? But in a lot of ways, it's the same. You know what I'm saying? Under the same alignment of some type of higher being or some type of 
next journey outside of this flesh I feel like in my yeah. opinion like there's something beyond this flesh but we're here while we're here to get everything we need to know as far as knowledge as far as um, what we want to be remembered for and uh, for me personally the type of uh, not even the type but the impact I want to leave on this earth while I'm still here in my flesh form and everything because um, it's definitely something beyond this Without a question, like, why else in different parts of the world, generations before me, you, him, any of us, would people still look upon the sky, whether they was on psychedelics, whether they was under uh, sacrificing, or whether, whatever the culture may have been on each continent, each place, each country on this earth way before us, there were still people believing in some type of higher being than themselves that gave them life, you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I'm I'm glad you're at, uh, vulnerable enough to have that type of open dialogue, bro. So yeah, um, and I do and I do want to say this real quick because like, <clears throat> um, even just even with that, it's like uh, I know and plus you know what I'm saying. I know you grew up with a you know Christian household, yeah. Christian family members is that the third, so you understand yeah. exactly deacons and all them. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm having to be a youth minister in that whole thing. Yeah, for real. Yeah. I used to have to be a youth minister and to preach in front of the kids and so everything. That's what I'm Deliver a message. But I like I, I enjoyed the message and everything, bro. Yeah. I can see why people use that book as a guidance in their life, you know what I'm saying? But it's beyond the church. But it's good that you're if you being in church keeps you good and in line and at your peace and at bay, go yes. Go you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna tell you how to live. Yeah. As long as you're not with ill intent and all that. Because when you brought up, it's the whole thing of this. Yes, because that's what it is. It's a commitment. It's a, you're repenting everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get too preachy, but. No, 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 yeah, man. But I'm saying, I, I was saying that because of this. Like, I understand mm -hmm. you, uh, you, you'll you know what I'm talking about whenever I say we come, when it comes down to Christianity and Christians. It's a lot of Christians in, uh, who profess the name of God or who profess to be Christians and have mm -hmm. a relationship with God. Yeah. That are very like stricken and judgmental. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You Super know what I mean? Judgmental. And there, there's that whole side of Christianity where it's like you said, like, oh, you're going to hell. Yeah. How the hell you know I'm going to hell? Did God say, hey, tell that nigga he going to hell? <laughs> hell no, nigga. <laughs> And that's a good point too, man. Cause like, and, and shout out Eddie Griffin. Yeah, and not to and not to even get too deep into it, but you know, uh, just from what I was reading in the Bible recently. Yeah. Um, there's a passage that I looked in there, and you know, mm -hmm. just just understanding that we look at the Bible as the Word of God, the mm -hmm. God, the you know what I'm saying, just the whole God of, yeah. of life, basically. So this is our truth. This is the Word of God. This yeah. is what's true about life. So, you know, I think I was reading, I want to say, I don't want to misquote the scripture. I'm right, so right, Because right. I ain't looking at it all. Don't hold it against them now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, there's a scripture in there where it talks, where God is talking. And he basically says, um, <clears throat> he'll, basically, he'll come to many people with the truth. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that everybody's going to believe. But he's not going to judge them for not right. believing. Right. So, the way that I interpreted that message, or that scripture in particular, was basically just saying we're here to be messengers. Mm -hmm. We're not here to be judges, to condemn people, right. to send people to hell, right. or to even, you know what I'm saying, put people in a, in a point of conviction mm -hmm. because we can't do that. We don't have any control. Yeah, over we anything. don't have that control. Exactly. That's like trying to <clears throat> cancel down Kanye or Dave Chappelle. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> You're not God, bro. You're trying to play the role of God. Yeah. No, nigga. No. <laughs> You going to hell, shit. Yeah, but pretty much, man, because you, because you got, you got to understand that, like, mm -hmm. when you, when you see a lot of Christians that are that are leading with judgment, yeah, and leading with conviction and condemnation, you got to get to understand, like, off. that's not even something that Jesus Himself would do. That's not right. even something that Jesus Himself mm -hmm. talked about, as far as us being able to talk to people. And the right, only right, thing right, we get them right, to understand right. is the judgment side of it. You going to hell. You know what I'm saying? You're not doing this right. Yeah. You need to change. You need to stop what you're doing. Yada, yada, yada. We deliver the message as far as, hey, look, mm -hmm. if you're professing the name of God, if you're telling yourself that you're a Christian, mm -hmm. these are things that the Bible tells us to hold as principles. These are the these are things that the Bible tells us 
to do and not to do with these particular reasons. Mm -hmm. You do what you want with the information. Yeah. Right. You do what you want with the information. But <laughs> you got to understand, if you're telling yourself that you have a true relationship with God and you truly know the Father, yeah. these are going to be things that the Holy Spirit, your new nature, are going to be yep. in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, are going to be contradictory to you. So you're not going to want to do these things. And like I said, we're here to be messengers. Right. We're not, I'm not here to look at you, you know what I'm saying, drinking and smoking and be like, man, put, put that, put, 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 put that back <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, what you doing? You I'm that? here to be like, look, you know what I'm saying? Look, man, you know, this might, may not be the best decision for you to be making. Hey, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be doing this, whatever. But yeah. I'm not here to force you or make you do anything because I can't do it. Can't. You I can. deliver the message to you, and mm -hmm. I do, and I do my due diligence by doing that. Yeah, it's I a can't suggestion. Make you do it. Right. You can't make nobody do you know a damn saying? thing. If you want to put that cigarette to your mouth, that's you. <laughs> you want to put that bun in your mouth, that's you. You want to be in the word, yeah. that's you. Like I, that's my main thing. I'm not gonna tell nobody. How to, you gay? Cool. You buy cool. You paying cool. Live how you live, but you know what I'm saying. Don't lead with the ill intent. Like you know what I'm saying. That's where you lose me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people do that, if people just mind their business, basically, bro, <laughs> just mind their fucking business. Like, not even just Christian motherfuckers that be like that, but just anybody. Everybody would be all right. I'm not saying that's the main answer, but that definitely would help to that if people just mind their motherfucking business. <laughs> Come on. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't mad at that, man. Oh, um, yeah, man. Damn. I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely coming with money your business, but at the same time, like just, just being, just, just rapping the truth with mercy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? One, mapping, rapping the truth with mercy, and two, just being congruent. Because I mean, like I said, that was one of my biggest things mm -hmm. with becoming a Christian at first. Because uh, you know, there was plenty of times when I was young, or even when I was a young adult after I graduated high school and college, yeah. and every, well, high school still in college after I graduated high school. So this is your last year <clears throat> in. Uh no, I got I got like a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, all yeah. right, all right. But uh yeah, even after graduating high school, man, like I knew I wasn't gonna <clears throat> be out here calling myself a Christian and yeah. claiming to be in relationship with God or if it's nothing I was gonna be all or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ain't no halfway in, yeah, halfway you know out saying? type of vibe. It's one either foot in the door, one right, foot out the door, either all in or you're not. Like that's how I carried my attitude too, is like when I go into things, like as many times I wanted to pick this back up. I just didn't want y'all to be like, yeah, this ain't really all him. I wanted to be fully there so that I can have y'all immersed into the conversation, have y'all, you know what I'm saying, back on road and see me doing better. But it's good that you're doing beyond better than I thought you would be, honestly, from what we last talked about, like the things you wanted to get into and all that, bro. Like, I'm glad you carry that with you. I'm glad you wear that badge where, yeah, bro, I'm. this is me and this is who I am, but... If this is who you are and this is who you say to be, then you appreciate that a lot more. You respect that a lot more. I respect that a lot more. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, shit. Damn, that one question. I, I don't forgot all the other yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, my fault, I don't went from I discipline ain't, ain't, to motivation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, the discipline yeah, yeah. in that, bro. There's yeah, this, there's, there's definitely discipline, discipline in that. Like, if you can find discipline in those things for every anybody, even for me, like discipline is pretty big. Where I had to test myself. All right. You wanna quit vaping? Yeah. So when this motherfucker dies, you know what you gonna do. Cause what you usually do is cold turkey. You don't do no oh, I'm gonna take a couple good big big Nah 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 nah. You gonna toss this motherfucker. And this is just an example. Yeah. So when I finished it, and it was like, alright, I'm done, I'm gonna toss it. Tossed it, but it was hard. It oh, was yeah. hard. It was times where I was waking up and I got muscle memory. Nope. Ain't coming. Ain't that 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 nope. You not fin to. You not. You say you're going to do it, so you're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. Everyone goes about it differently. Some people might go uh, by notches. Like, for me, all in or all out. So, I, damn. <laughs> you know, I don't find too many people that be all in or all out. For real, for real. Like, that's a commitment to the discipline. That, that discipline is... It's either slow motion or no motion. Because with motivation, there's times where there's no motion at all. You're just waiting on hints of motivation. And it ain't coming. It ain't hitting like it was before. But when you discipline and you do it whenever you don't feel like doing it, it shapes you better. It makes you better. 
you go get it more. You know what I'm saying? And it adds to your disciplinary points as a human, I feel like. I'll I say it like this real quick. I would say it's, it's, it's a lot more firm to stand on discipline mm -hmm. because if we're, if we're looking at discipline. Discipline is it's, it's constantly making a decision every single day. Every day. Discipline is making a decision. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like you said, with vaping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Vaping isn't you just coming to yourself and yeah. taking away the you feeling of those wanting to vape. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. don't take away the feeling of You're going to have the urge to be lazy. You're going to have the exactly. urge to hit the vape. You're going to have the urge to, I'll start that next week. <laughs> Why did you start the day? Why did you? Cause I had that battle too. Yeah. Everybody do it at one point in their life. You, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's gonna have that battle. I feel like mm -hmm. where you gonna come to a decision where do you want to keep living or do you want to keep putting yourself down in this hole and then wondering, 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 wondering where this go? Cause it starts with you. It starts with you. And like I had to put that work in to start with me to get where I am right now, so we can have this conversation on Hill conversation, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. I'm proud of you too, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna leave you hanging. I ain't gonna leave you hanging. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna leave you hanging. Too, man, Cause that takes a lot. I know it takes it, a lot. It you did. Know what I'm it took a lot. It did. And um, <laughs> shadow work, man. I tried everything. Things that didn't work. Things that did work. You know what I'm saying? And what did work, I stuck to it and I added on to it. Uh, not just a routine, but just a train of thought. Like I said, the attitude I want to carry in this world. Uh, I just want to be impactful, bro, in every way, in every way, whether that's through sound, through conversation, through food, through culture, whatever. I'm doing whatever it takes, bro, because uh, we all, we all, we all don't know when we going to leave. You know what I'm saying? I done seen people walk out. I done seen people die. Some people starting their family. Some people in their last year in college. You know what I'm saying? Some people just now starting college. Some people getting married. But... Everyone's at a different role, different pace in their life, and I can respect that. But I'm gonna mind my business doing that, man. <laughs> I can't be involved with everybody like I used to, man. Like, I know when I was having those seasons when I was recording, it didn't look like it, but y'all didn't know. Nobody knew. Unless you knew. And if you knew, you knew. But now, you know, this is a whole different energy right here. This is a whole different game. Everybody's had two years. I'm through playing. I'm here to stay. Like, I'm not going nowhere, bro. When it seemed like yeah, I wasn't going to do it, I ended up doing it. I was just like, all right, it's the time. It's time. Yeah, it's time. I had that conversation when it was time, and I knew when it was time. Um, so I'm looking forward to 2024, man, um, and all that. Um, Damn, it's only been oh shit. Okay, we got, we got some good time, man. All right, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Well, no, nah, that's beautiful though, man. Cause I mean, if you think about it, like it's like no matter no matter what mm -hmm. you're going through in any type of in any type of situation, like even with yeah, even with where you was with being on fire with the podcast and dropping yeah. episodes back to back, yeah. back, standing on it, posting on yeah, Instagram. Same. YouTube, this, that, and the third, and even to taking that decline where you was off of it for a little bit. I wouldn't say decline, yeah. it was a plateau moment. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know when, you, when you go up, you can go down, but that's if you let other people climb your mountain. So I had, mm. I stopped doing that when I was young, 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 letting people climb my mountain. It was just a plateau of where it was so much outside bullshit going on that, like I said, I stopped myself. Yeah. But I know what I'm fully capable of. Yeah, two, year, two years, a lot of could have been done, but I think I think it was supposed to happen the way it was supposed to happen because mm -hmm. God has, like I said earlier, God has a funny sense of humor. And when I say God, I don't just mean the Christian God, Allah, or any. Like, it's just all one to me. So when I speak one, I speak out of love, bro. Mm -hmm. I speak out of love when I talk my shit, man, because it ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not pointing no fingers. What I went through was what I needed to go through. I was stripped of everything from finance to this good job to the podcast going on. Like, I was stripped of everything one by one. And he was like, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you since you want to be fast moving and do all these other things. And I'm like, I'm doing good. No, 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 no. Life was like, nah, I ain't through with you. I got more work to put you through, more canon events <laughs> to put you through. So it was just like, all right, I'm here for it. I had to face it for real. Alone, I had to, man. Yeah, 
everybody had to probably face a lot of things alone, man. And they here to, they're here today, but a lot of people ain't. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I try to be as empathetic, sympathetic, but like I said, 2024, man, I'm just coming different. I'm rolling the ball different. Fuck it. <laughs> but, 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 but think about it like this, man. You, there's really no other way for real. No, gotta, ain't no other way. You gotta bear that burden. Yeah. Think about it like that. Ain't I mean, no other way. About, Cause I mean, just just looking at it like this, like I said, well, yeah, just going towards it. Um, yeah, with moments like that, where we where we kind of got the ball rolling mm -hmm. and everything's getting bigger and increasing, mm -hmm. and we having all this fun, we're making all this content. This yeah, thing, a lot of fun. It was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then it just comes to to a, to a I won't say a complacent point, but a point where everything just just gets still for a moment. You know Very saying? still, comfortable, Absolutely. too comfortable, too so it's comfortable. Like, even when you get so in depth with being so comfortable in this one space, yeah. where it's like you're not as active or you you don't got as much energy as you did. It's like even with being in that space, it's interesting how just because of the person you are and the type of heart that you have and the purpose that you have in this world, right. how God is going to speak to you and not and even just that spirit that's yeah. inside of you. That's gonna tell you, look, man, like you know what I'm saying, like I'm, like I'm, I'm bigger than this. Or I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be doing more than this. Mm -hmm. It's gonna to speak to you every single time you get into a moment to where you feel like you're at rock bottom, or you're getting too complacent, mm -hmm. or you're just going down towards a decline to where it's like, yo, I'm about to, I'm about to hit the bottom of the hill at mm -hmm. this point. Crash. It's interesting how that spirit is gonna fill you in these moments and get you to understand, like, nah, 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 I might be here, but I'm not gonna stay here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like God is always gonna have a point to where He's pulling you out of these things. Definitely gonna make you go through these things because I mean, that's, that's just a part of our growth. That's mm -hmm. what's gonna help us grow. That's what's gonna help us learn yeah. and get these experiences. But uh, yeah, like like I was saying, my initial point is just when we do go through these things, that's not that's not something that anybody's gonna be able to hold our hand through. No. That's nothing we gonna no have man. to have somebody depend on. We gonna have to bear them crosses by ourselves, man, mm -hmm. every single time. That moment's always gonna come, and when I was going through that, the fact that you brought up the spirit, the only thing I really asked from from God, and the most that I ever prayed about, was keeping my spirit alive. <laughs> like when I tell you, when a man's spirit is gone and broken, it's gone, bro. Like I, I needed my spirit still there. Like I would refuse to die. I refuse to die, man. Like in those times where it felt like I died again, I died again, I died again, I'm keep burying in my own grave. No, I still ask, just keep my spirit alive. Please just keep my spirit alive. Make me new again. And he did. Even if it wasn't the Christian God, it was some God. It was something out there. And somebody was definitely praying for a young nigga for real, bro. I'm not supposed to be here, bro. Hey, I'm not. Me, I'll tell you, it's always going to be Jesus that pull us out of those times. Every single time, it's always gonna be that, bro. I know for a fact if anybody's listening, it's always gonna yeah. be that. So it's like, yeah, but like I said, he just in those moments, and I and I, and I love that. I love you just put, putting shining the light on that, just keeping your spirit alive for the most part. Yeah. Because I mean, like we was talking about earlier, I mean, just the fleshly things, you know what I'm saying? It it just they're present, but they don't have as much power when we look at it from a, from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. Just looking at being able to understand exactly how much drive and how much initiative and how much power and will we can get from just asking for things like God. Like the only thing I ask you for is to keep my spirit alive, yeah. to keep the Holy Spirit in me, mm -hmm. just to keep me going. You know what I'm saying? And just and just looking at how much how much value something like that has. Cause it's like you know what I'm saying. You could sit here and pray to God. Oh my God, like mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, yeah. give, give me equipment, God. Give, give me, give me money. Give me, give me cars. Give me, <laughs> give, give, give me, me food. You know give what I'm saying? Food, give me money. Exactly. Let me hit the lotto. <laughs> Come on, baby, please. <laughs> I need it. But asking for something as valuable as keeping your spirit alive, mm -hmm. and a lot of people wouldn't think about that in those times. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would look at it from the perspective of thinking about the necessities we need at these times. Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever look at it. Just give me the power to be able to go get these things mm -hmm. give me the spirit for it mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't going to look at it from that perspective even in being in times mm -hmm. where you feel like you're at your lowest 
it's a lot of people that wouldn't turn at it and look at it from an internal thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would just look at it from an external perspective, from a worldly perspective. Like God, give me, give me, give me money so I can <laughs> pull myself out of this yeah. situation. God, give I me, can. give me a man, give me, give me a woman so I can make <laughs> these times a lot better. Where's my husband? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, yeah. and, and it's and it's never the same. And it's mm -hmm. never exactly what you ask for. It's never mm -mm. asking for mm -mm. for for the spirit. Mm -mm. It's never asking for strength. It's never asking for for wisdom, revelation, mm -hmm. none of these things. You know. So yeah, I I I, I love hearing that, bro. I, I love that for you. I love that that was something that you always kept your, your tunnel vision on and kept a focus on was just keeping your spirit mm -hmm. intact because mm -hmm. it's, it's just a lot of power in there for mm -hmm. me so yeah I, I love you and it's a lot of power behind that you believe it like <laughs> yeah. that was the only thing i felt like he needed to keep a hold like you've already taken the cars you've already taken the money you've already taken the girl you've already uh separated me from people that care so much about me they had to let me go you had to show me and when I have none of those things to ask for, I can only focus on asking for him to keep my spirit alive. Like, for real. Like, that was it. That was it. It was a battle. It was tough. It was a war. It was, you know, everything that you can name under that name of keeping my spirit. Because some of them can lose faith. Some can lose faith in others. They can lose faith in themselves. But as long as you got your spirit, the thing that makes you you, that untangible that we're talking about, the untangible, mm -hmm. it, it, <laughs> it'll make you new again, it'll make you bright, mm -hmm. it'll make you focus. But you, when you put the work behind it, every day you ask for it, you talk about it, you speak about it, the power in the tongue. It'll show. The results will show. Uh, my main message was uh, I start how I finish and I end how I start. <laughs> I start how I finish Man, you talking about and I end how I start. <laughs> that was my main thing that got That's me good. through. Like It was those, um, what's that A word? Uh, not automations, affirmations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, inner affirmations. affirmations, not external. Oh my body is new phone. Feel better. Temporary. I right, I need something else. PS5. I need a new mic. I need more money. No 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 no. As for those inner things, humane things, protect my mental, protect my conscience. Don't let me lose myself again. Don't let me lose myself any more than I already have. Cause I've lost myself. That's the main thing why I last keep my spirit alive. Keep my spirit alive. I'm grateful for those who stayed and supported me. Because nobody can do it alone. Yeah, we spoke on nobody's going to hold your hand. We know that part. But whatever system, whatever support you have around you, use that as much as you can through those tough times and in those moments. Because when those moments come, you're going to know who's around. You're going to know who really meant, I love you, man. I love you. I love you. You gonna know when shit hits the fan. You gonna know. Yeah. I don't care if it was the smallest thing where if you just checked on me. Hey man, how you doing? How you been today, man? How was your week? Let's talk. What's going on? How's mom? Those little things. Not just. Hey man, you know I got five, five, fifteen dollars. I'm not asking for too many handouts. I don't want to owe nobody. I'm glad to this day I don't owe nobody. Nobody owes me. But I'm talking about the intangibles of loyalty, not just love. We can all speak love, talk, do love things out of love because we know you love that thing. But it's the loyalty thing that I respect more. It's the brotherhood that I respect more. It's the not just how long I've known you, but how much have you been there when everybody else walked away and everybody else ran that way. I'm still trying to stay on the straight and narrow. It gets tough. It do. As a young black man, it gets tough. It's every day we, we like you said, it's an everyday choice mm -hmm. between discipline, between keeping your spirit, between following God, whatever that is for you. You stick to that. Stay rooted. But it's still, I'm open to learning, but I still am rooted into who I am. 
I needed to keep that because if I lost that, I wouldn't be me. I'm going to be somebody else. I'm going to be something that I'm not. And that's when I didn't want to rush it. Where's the podcast? Where's the... Y'all, I'm coming. Don't worry. It'll be here, but we're here right now. Back over there. <laughs> real, real conversation, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's real love, too, on both sides. Yeah. That's real love as far as what you're talking about with... Uh, Whenever, basically, whenever the whenever the pressure is real, mm-hmm. just seeing who's still going to be around in your, in your circle and in your area, mm-hmm. those type of people, the people that are still there, the people that are still checking up, the people that are still offering to, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. help you out or give support, however they yeah. can, that's real love. And also, just uh, within yourself, giving yourself the affirmations, strengthening it, doing what you can to strengthen your spirit. Yeah. And ask for that, ask for that revelation and the wisdom, and keeping your mind intact, safeguarding your spirit, safeguarding your mental. That's real. That's real self love. Yeah. First, self love. Self love. I was big on self love. I made a whole video on that, bro. I was just talking about that with him. How I had a whole separate channel that nobody knew about while I was off the podcast world and universe. I had a whole other channel where I was just recording me talking, mm-hmm. just talking, like. What I was not what I was initially going through, but what I have things I wanted to look forward to, and it really's been speaking into existence, bro. I probably send you those clips whenever I can. After this, maybe we can, you know, what I'm saying, chop that up. But yeah, yeah I spoke about those things. For the most part. Yeah, okay. yeah, like in a safe manner, though, because mm-hmm. I, I try to. Let me not say try, because I hate that word try. In my vocabulary, I've been trying to, I've been wanting to cut that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. cut that out. I ain't gonna lie, I've been trying to do the same thing. Yeah, because I've been wanting to do the same thing. Yeah, I'm wanting to do it. Because I had a conversation with somebody who was like, I was telling them, I was like, yeah, I I know growing up, I've had the people that I needed to hear it from, but they didn't tell me that I was great. They didn't tell me this, they didn't tell me that. But it, she broke it down for me. She was just like, but, and through God, she was just like, but you are. When you say, I am, I am great. I am this. I am that. When you start to apply that to yourself and not depend on that, that knocks out motivation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that separates the dogs and the little dogs trying to get to the water in the bowl. Or everybody, there's enough for everybody, bro. It's enough for everybody to eat. That's what that I understand. It's so when you mind your business, everybody to eat. If you doing your thing over there, okay, we got this going on over there. But you know, if if it, if it, if it, if it complements what we got going on, we can collab. This is an open collab. This is an open conversation. This is open dialogue. Like I'm all over the place. I know, but you know me. I like to ramble every day. This is a little, but I'm just saying though that. This is my truth, man. That's just what it is. But what it's going to be is what I set it out to be. So when I see the end result of what I put in, that's what I get out. And it ain't going to always be what I want. But it's going to be step by step. It's a whole marathon. This ain't no race. I'm going at my pace, baby. You can run. You can jackrabbit. You can hop, skip, make this shortcut. But it's going to bring you right back to where you was. It's definitely going to bring you right back to where you was because that's how you need to do it. You need to do it the way that you were supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? So just by everybody else already doing the things that I didn't need to do, they already opened that door for me. The hard part's over. <laughs> me doing it is the part that I need to do. Exactly. It's just to do it. So it ain't you got no what more. It takes to get it done. I'm a try. You got what it takes or, to get it done. Man. You got to think about it like that too, man. Everybody's full. When I wrecked, when I, what that time away taught me also was the things I thought that wasn't possible became possible for me it really did and right in front of me so by me just pressing that button all right y'all i'm back we're back on ill conversation that's it that's the end of it it's in that damn button man golly thank you man um i appreciate the soundboard i appreciate the, you letting us use the space this mic uh, i know i didn't tell you he was coming but yeah i figured mm-hmm. y'all knew each other and everything yeah. he's cool see my boy you know yeah 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 <laughs> we got some people off camera listening we got some action going on in the other room but you know we kicking it we cooling in everybody i hope y'all been having a good time you know what i'm saying good night good evening whatever you want to call it but you know what i'm saying i love it this is what i love to do man open dialogue like 
<clears throat> I remember just taking rides or always having to ask for a ride or just, and then I'm still getting that conversation out of you, man. Somebody, all we got is to teach each other. Yeah. That's all we got is to try to teach each other. But I've been wanting to travel a lot more, honestly. I honestly been wanting to travel a lot more with it, yeah. man. Definitely, like I feel like that has set a whole different. Um, it'll be an eye opener for me into yeah. what I thought. Oh, this is how this. No, because what you see on your phone or the news or whatever, however you get your information, is different when you're in the space of that culture or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And when you're there and you're actually experiencing it in the moment, I feel like is what I need to experience more in my time now. Is traveling more and expanding yeah. my horizons. Because uh, I've already expanded enough on the way I think or being an open book, but I really want to experience travel more, man. And that's, yeah, I'm looking forward to that this year. Just like, taking in the world for real. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to see out here, though, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot to mm -hmm. like uh, what you open to the trip? Well, I know you open to traveling outside the country, but like, you know what I'm saying? How much, how much of, the, of, the, of the states have you seen? I've been to, you know? like, how many? Yeah, just how much of the U.S. have you seen? Just from uh, where we at? I've probably seen New York, a little bit of uh, Florida, um, Georgia, Tennessee a lot, or New York. I've been there once. Yeah, I've been there with that trip with you. You know how that went, man? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely will get to that one day um, whenever we get <laughs> you know. Oh, New York, man, that was a fun trip. I was a young nigga, though, doing a lot. Yeah. Doing a lot, but I it was fun though, man. Hey, bro, we all got our moments, man. Yeah, Trust man. Me. I've been on uh, in Washington, yeah. Washington D.C. I've been all over there, but I definitely want to hit all the way to Phoenix or all the way over there, or whatever the case bro, may be. But to outside you. the country too, yeah. I just went to Phoenix last year mm -hmm. for the first time. Oh. Phoenix was dope. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. lie to you, like. It, the area was cool because I was in downtown Phoenix. We yeah. stayed at the Sheraton, so we was like in the center of just about everything. We was right next to the con to the conference center and everything. Right. But food was bomb out there. People was cool. They had a lot going on. It was December, so like they had a bunch of events going on. Like they had the comedy house popping. Nice. They had uh, you know how like in some big cities, like even in New York, New York, downtown where Manhattan is at, where they got the little. The little ice skating rink or whatever. You know how they got that in the center? Yeah, of the in the center of the... Yeah. They had what? that popping. In, in Phoenix? A, in Phoenix. <laughs> in Phoenix. I never heard of her. In that damn 100 degree weather. Yeah, what? I'm See, telling you. What motherfuckers do ayahuasca yeah. now? I mean, it was, it was colder because it was December, but okay. colder for Phoenix is like... What? 60 degrees, maybe. 60? Shit. Like 60 degrees, maybe. Ain't maybe that. in the 50s. I can't remember because it's been a minute. But like, yeah, it was like it was like a... A light breeze. You light know what I'm saying? It was breezy out there. With a light coat on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it was jacket weather pretty like, much. That's an ice skating yeah. rink. Ice skating rink. Yeah, it was an ice called? skating rink. Damn. With a big Christmas tree in the city. Mm. So, in December yeah, they did it how they do it in Home Alone and all that. Oh, stuff like yeah. That. That's my favorite, one of my yeah. favorite Christmas classes right there. So, yeah, Phoenix is dope, bro. The food out there was real good, too. That's one of the biggest the things. Food. Ooh, I'm food. big on food. I'm a food man, food oh. person. Bro, I'm going to tell you, we checked out this one place yeah. called uh, Stoop Kid. Yeah. And it's kind of like a little, it's like a little retro, mm -hmm. little retro uh, restaurant or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if retro is the right word to look for it. But yeah, you know, we uh we went in there. They got like bar stools and like picnic tables. Oh, like a there. diner? Nah, it's like it's like a it's basically a diner, but it's open. It's like mm -hmm. it's got an open outside, like a little picnic area. Oh, you know okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But okay. it's inside the restaurant. Oh, okay. so that's what made it dope, first yeah. of all. And it's got this little bar area and it's that in the third. But uh, the food was bomb, bro. They had okay. they gave us like these little grilled cheese mm -hmm. cheeseburgers or whatnot. And some tater tots to go with it, and, <laughs> bro. The lemonade, the lemonade, the lemonade. They got um, lemonade action bro, out there. They got homemade lemonade, homemade lemonade bro. in Phoenix. Let me the see. The lemonade, <laughs> Phoenix, y'all got some dope <laughs> lemonade, man. I'm gonna have to fuck with it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the lemonade was what did it for me. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, you, the food. You probably have about two, three, four, five of them, uh, man. Make it free refills. Free, free, free yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> you got me. I'm trying to see what y'all talking about, Yo, Phoenix. Really? Okay, okay, Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix got some dope food out there. Though, okay, bro. so dope food. I really enjoyed my time out there. Yeah.
That's what it's all about. Have a good time and indulge in it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know what you're going to discover. But that's part of the reason why I want to travel a lot more, man. Mm -hmm. Just get out there. You know what I'm saying? That exposure to things that I never tried. Like, hey, hey you never tried this? Yeah, Mark. Yeah, Sally. Let's hop on. Come on. <laughs> and, you know, the only black dude there, he was like, shit. Yeah. I don't want to be the only one left out, but I'm... It's some fun shit, okay. Fine, y'all got me. <laughs> it's just that exposure. That's <laughs> yeah, let me ask you this though. So with that being yeah. said, what's like, I guess like mm -hmm. another five places in the states you want to travel, you want to see. Just, just, just the next five. Let's think about that. Just the next five places within the United to, States. That you want to see. Oh, okay. Within the okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna do it. Yeah, All right, it within the know. United States. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with this. Oh, uh, uh, five. Um, I probably definitely want to go to Cali. 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 I want to go to New York again for the for that whole scene, but definitely in the, maybe in a warmer time yeah. than I did last time. When it was a Are little you cold. Snow? Nah, it won't no snow action. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah, so nah, 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 mm nah. -hmm. I know they snow mm -hmm. get But I gotta get used to wanting to fly because I never flew before. Oh, for real? Yeah. 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 But if I had a group. Yeah. Then a road trip type Bob, I'd be down for that. But I'm sure some people just can't sit too long and all that and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely Cali. Um, I know everybody be like, oh Vegas, 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 Vegas. But I, I want to go to um, in America. Shit. Yeah, I don't want to go to Cali. Got a lot of land down there. Nah, it's a lot of land. I love. I'm a land man. <laughs> I'm big on land. Speaking of land, um. Shit, I'm gonna have to go with some, some nobody would ever probably say. Let me say like Wyoming or some shit. Wyoming. Yeah, cause yeah, like you know, you know how Dave Chappelle coming in, he be like, he always talks about uh, Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's, that's where he lives. Yeah, that's where he, that's where he lives, and I know he does yeah. a lot of things over there that a lot of people don't see, cause it's like a small rural area, small town type shit. And I want to visit yeah. some small town type shit too, cause there's some probably some gems in there. So maybe I want to go to like oh, yeah. Wyoming or Utah or something. <laughs> Like what the hell is in South Dakota that we don't know about? Let me fucking find I'm out. I'm not gonna lie to you though. <laughs> That's a good point to touch on because yeah. one of the first, no, the first place I mm -hmm. ever traveled to by myself. By yourself? Was, yeah, by myself. Like just me, Dolo, nobody else. Just pack my bag and, and go. <laughs> and it was uh, it was South Bend, Indiana. Indiana. I went to South Bend, Indiana by myself for the first time. Mm. I was out there for like four days. Four days. And I stayed out there. But uh and, and you gotta have, you gotta have a body for that too. Well not the body and the physical, but mm -hmm. you gotta have like the, the the attitude for it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have the the, the uh yeah. the mentality for it. Yeah, you can't just get there and be like, <clears throat> oh, man, I don't wanna yeah, go. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck you came so, for then, bitch? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> but with me, like I got there and I had some plans mm -hmm. whenever I first got there, right. but they kinda basically fell through. So like it was up to me to you know what I'm saying? Take the initiative to Google on my phone. Okay, what's the hot spots in this area? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's close by me? So mm -hmm. I'm not just sitting research. In, you feel me? So I'm not just sitting yeah. in my hotel room the whole time. So right. Like, you don't want to do that sitting in the hotel oh, the whole right. time. Like, what's the point of going to trip just to look exactly. out the window and smoke my <laughs> reefer? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. You dare to actually? You can do that at home. Right. right. You can do that at home. <laughs> so yeah, I had to take the initiative to look up what was in the area, and I had to I had to actually go out. And meet people, yeah. find places, talk to people, this, that, and the third. Yeah. But uh, and it probably took me like a day, maybe two, to do that. And I had the best time of my life wow. ever out of South Bend, Indiana. Shit. And a lot of people don't even know about South Bend, Indiana. It's a gem, like I said. I want yeah. to explore some of them gem spots that I don't saying? know about. That I just fuck it. I'm gonna look it up, like you said. Yeah. Ask people. I'm sure they can be like, yeah, you're not from here. Okay, go over there, down that yeah. corner. You're going to find that good spot. you have a lot of fun. I, I promise you, darling. <laughs> That's what it's all about, but you got to yeah. talk to the locals. You got to talk to the locals, You got to talk real. to the locals. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like if you, because, I mean, for one, it's a go figure. They know they know this place like the back of their hands. Mm -hmm. They can tell you everything from yeah, where the parties are. You don't want to go over are. there, but you yeah. do want to go over here. Exactly. Not at this time, but you, you come Sunday night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah, they yeah, can tell yeah. you everything where the parties are, where the food okay. is, where the hotels are, yeah. where uh, where, 
where the women are, whatever the case yeah, may be. Yeah, 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 whatever you're looking for. You know for, what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever What's you fun do y'all got in Indiana that yeah, I don't know yeah. about? So, yeah, exactly. okay. how it operates, Shoot. what are the good areas, what are the bad areas. Okay. So, yeah, like I said, you got you to gotta have the, the, um, the personality for mm-hmm. it, though, to be willing to get out and do yeah. stuff like that. But once you once you do build up that confidence, mm-hmm. actually get out and be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? My name is such and such. Like, can you tell me about the area? Yeah. Then, bro, you know what I'm saying? It's it's nothing but opportunities at that point. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like once you once you actually get outside of your comfort zone, because mm-hmm. I know it's a lot of people that struggle with doing that for mm-hmm. one. But once you actually take the initiative, to get outside your comfort league. zone, and that'll be a good yeah, way. Absolutely. Oh, you comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open that shell real quick and get your ass outside to get out there, okay? Shit. That's why I'm fucking travel. <laughs> I know I know I can be a bit too much, man, but it, that's how I see it in my head. It's like, get out of the comfort zone. Let's go out there and all right. Let's talk to the locals. That's that's good. Not that's not that's not bad advice for anyone that wants to travel shit. I can take that advice whenever wherever I wanna go. Um, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Cali, some type of gym spot in Wyoming, South Dakota, all that. Maybe Florida. Um, let's try out Nevada, Phoenix, and all that. Uh, I definitely, like I said, I want to try New York again. Uh, probably not when it's cold. <laughs> when it's fairly warm and I could just walk around and not having to layer up and shit. Um, I'm scared of New York when it's cold. Scared of New York when it's cold. Batman, I don't know. <laughs> Batman gonna come out to save you or some shit, man. Uh, I don't know. Somebody did to be out there. What, what I be hearing about <laughs> you gonna be in the fucking alleyway? <laughs> just walking down there. Like, I ain't even gonna be in the city. I'll be going better. I'll, the, be, I'll yeah. be right back in Berlin. Okay. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> shit, bro. The first moment he just said, This ain't sitting well with me on the own. I'm saying, I'm Batman ain't gonna here. get that quick enough. Mm-hmm. Batman get that like, Did somebody pay me? <laughs> I did. Like, bro, I did, but you yeah. took too long. I just went back to Burlington now. <laughs> I went back to North Carolina. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah. Talked about spiritual, talked about traveling, talked about growth and how far we've come and everything. and um, once again, like I said, appreciate you opening this space. I'm gonna keep saying yeah, it because, like exactly, I said, man, man, you said do this in person. I was like, shit, I gotta figure this Bro. out. I gotta figure <laughs> this. <laughs> well, I, eventually we gonna get it right. You know what I'm saying? It might be a little, little budget, but I'm gonna make it work, goddamn it, yeah, because that's your nigga. <laughs> that's what I do. I'm gonna figure it out. Like I said, 2024. What y'all doing? Y'all better be doing y'all motherfucking thing. I hope y'all had two years. Two years. Tell you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Dude. Oh, I'm oh, doing man. too much, bro. Oh, Put the baby voice back on. <laughs> oh, I, I was picking it up and I, I'm, I, I'm picking it out. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> I turned on the baby. Okay, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. My oh bad. My <laughs> no, man, but oh. I'm in the moment more than I am oh, than I used man. to be. So, shit yeah, happens. I'm gonna get better at that. Okay, oh, I'm gonna shit. get. I'm, I'm not even gonna touch it though, no, man. Either, bro. Unless necessary, I'll touch it. Oh, <laughs> but I was picking geez. it up. <laughs> okay, my bad, 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 my bad. I gotta get disciplined enough yeah. with the soundboard. Okay, that's nah, the bro, goal. That's what now. it's all about. I ain't gonna care. <laughs> the more you mess with it, the more you learn it. Yeah. Trust yeah. me. Yeah, man. I, yeah, that's with anything. Because yeah. as a child, when you're young and you're fiddling with something, you're like, you're figuring it out, okay? Somebody might say, "Oh, you you never thought about messing with like that?" Okay, yeah, let me try that. Let me try that. Okay, let me try that. And, oh shit, I found something else new. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I love, I've always been about that discoverability. Is that a word? Discoverability? I don't well, know. It is. It ain't good. a word. It's, it's a word good. now. <laughs> I'm big on discovering things. Like, I, as a kid, I was just so much of a sponge, bro. Like, I just soaked in a lot of information. So, I think that's what added on to me being an open book or always wanting to be a student. Not just academically where it's just a structure. All right, follow the textbooks, follow the power PowerPoint. No, like I like to learn differently, hands on, or like to mess with things and buttons like I've been doing and when I shouldn't been doing it, but that's all right, we're gonna learn. So yeah, I've always liked learning hands on and I appreciate you helping out, man. I like I said, I appreciate this space. This is more hands on than any other episode out there. So you know what I'm saying? we dope in here, bro. I mean for real, for real, only nobody uh trying to trying to munch on us real quick for still having a Christmas tree up. Oh yeah, yeah. Yo, oh, don't <laughs> like that, you said that ain't that, nobody business. That anyway. ain't that ain't none of your business. Don't worry about nothing. Yeah. All right, cause some of you motherfuckers out there still got your tree up with the decorations, <laughs> with the stockings, with the lights outside <laughs> still probably. So don't worry about nothing. All right, this is a vibe. So don't even fuck up the vibe. All right, <laughs> we chilling. Don't worry about nothing. Mind your business. Well, like I was saying earlier, but yeah, but like, yeah. Me, and, me and my pops pretty much share, share the same style for the most part. Just mm-hmm. real mellow, chill, comfortable, yeah. cultural. You cultural. see, you got swords and all these different yeah. Asian artifacts and everything. Yeah, everywhere. I've so noticed the like, artifacts, bro. That reminds me of Kill Bill type shit yeah, right there, real, bro. Man. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that, that, yeah, that kind of ties into what you were saying, bro. Like, stuff like this, just this type of aesthetic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why my room, I don't think you've seen my room yet, but yeah, that's why my no. room looks the way that it does. Like, mm-hmm. dark colors, you know what I'm saying? A lot of abstract stuff. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Cultural things. I got swords in my room. I got, uh, you know what I'm saying? Little tapestries, posters. Mm-hmm. Is that in the third? Kind of okay. Make it up. You know yeah, definitely saying? check that out if you, if you don't mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause I remember the last episode, I was like, ah, this is a whole. We back yeah. in my room with it, okay. I'm saying. And y'all saw the little new posters and everything I had. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I, I, there was a moment when my room was a little plain and all that, cause I've left a few times, but I've came back. I was like, yeah. okay, this room needs to be a new style, new era, new whatever. So I started putting up things that I have an interest or was part of my childhood, probably or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? That I find an interest in and that reflects. You know, me, I guess, you know what I'm saying, growing up and everything. So, yeah, for sure. Um, but that's why that's what them adolescent years are so important. Yeah. You know? I mean, it teaches you a lot about yourself mm-hmm. initially, for one. Because mm-hmm. it's like, you know, even with you, you know what I'm saying, just being, just understanding how your childhood taught you, you was a real hands on person. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, for a lot of people, I think a lot of the things that, that make us into who we are, I mean, it definitely comes from our childhood. But yeah. It's like, I think it's real particular things because it's not everything that we, that we remember or we pick up mm-hmm. on in my childhood, but it's very, it's those little things in particular yeah. that kind of stuff. Those minute. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like for me personally, like I know for me, a uh, big <clears throat> one is, um, I'll say just acceptance, mm-hmm. like acceptance and love. And I'll, I'll go in depth with it as far as saying like, yeah. uh, just always being empathetic and loving the people because when I was a child, I was around my grandma's life. I was with my grandmothers, and you know, just a lot of, well, the majority of that side of my family is women anyway, but I was always around my mother, my grandmother, you know, my aunts, uh, people like that, a lot of women, a lot of strong and loving women in my yep. family, so that's what they taught me initially, was just being able to love people, love people regardless, yep. always be open to being kind to one another, share empathy, this, that, and the third, and that carried, and that carried with me up until I became an adult. But you know, I, I appreciate them a lot <clears throat> for those type of uh, qualities that they embed in one. Because it's like, the yo, like, you're in your personality. Yeah, absolutely. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? It's it's not even just with love, but it's like with just those different things. It's like sometimes a lot of people don't get to experience that type of stuff. Like, my family is very affectionate. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Speak when you come in the door, hugs and kisses. Yeah, speak you know when you're saying? spoken to yeah, and all that. You know it's a uniqueness <clears throat> to every human. Absolutely. Of how they was brought up. Some was brought up one parent. Okay, which parent? Mom or dad? Mom. So that means you're gonna be a majority of mom's side and all this. Or mm-hmm. brought up with dad. 
and it'll be majority of dad's side. Okay, if you have both parents, that's a uniqueness to every dynamic, to every encounter, to every experience from falling off a bike, scraping your knee. What do you associate that with? Do you associate that with pain because nobody helped you clean it up? Or do you associate that with the mother figure that helped and got you bandaged up and nurtured you and everything and be like, okay, it's all right. Or the dad that said, okay, be tough about it, son, but I'm still gonna help you out, but just know this is nothing compared to what you're gonna go through in life. Like, it's a uniqueness in that. And I, I appreciate you bringing that up and giving flowers to the mother figures or whoever it is, the guardian that helped raise you. Cause they were still little kids too. 70 year olds are still little kids I still try to hold on to that little kid nature in me Yes, I'm becoming a man and the adult And maturity and responsibilities But that kid in me is still there When you talk to me You're still talking to 9 year old me You're still talking to 19 year old me You're talking to 22 year old me And so forth You're talking to every version of me um, As I get, get older So I respect that you have Not love per se Like you said, but uh, empathy or something or sym sym sympathetic which means you're accepting of people how they come and who they are but also being careful with that because some people can misuse and abuse people that have those qualities about them and they can uh, use 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 and take 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 because we do live in a take 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 world <coughs> when there's not enough giving out of your heart or out of the fact that you see something that's not right or whatever the case may be but I wanted to go into because I just recently learned this the fact that you brought that up I just recently learned in a way like you kind of said but I recently learned that um damn I had it <laughs> but I recently had learned that yes it's okay to be a good person yes allow yourself grace and live your peace and everything but be careful when you let in like that. Because like like I said, some people's gonna take advantage of that and wow man, for you to speak that, I can I fuck with that. There's people that's definitely gonna fuck with that. Like that's true. That's you're true to who you are. And like I said earlier, it goes back to your upbringing and the root of who you are. And some people might not have an idea of that still because they're still trying to find their identity. Because it is a bit of an identity crisis going on, but with everything being accessible nowadays, there's an advantage to generations today that generations before us didn't have when they were still trying to find themselves and they were having kids, trying to raise a family, doing the best they can, the best that they could, and say, and have to live with the results of who they raised and everything, whether they was in the streets, whether they was here or there. Your child, yes, they will make mistakes. They might make the same mistakes you do, but you're doing your best for them to not do what you did because of everything you've learned. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do want to say this too, bro, because I, I watched the video last night. I was I was scrolling on Instagram, mm -hmm. and I stopped and seen a video with this comedian. His name is Preacher Lawson, <clears throat> and he asked a, a question in the camera. He was like, uh, he basically just said, "How old were you?" realized that your parents don't have it all figured out mm -hmm. basically like just to where you get to that point of understanding like oh okay they're they're basically learning this as they go yes, you know what I'm saying they don't have all the answers they're not as prepared there's as no prepared. handbook for that yeah you know what I'm saying like so like what like yeah just to ask you the same question like have you ever been in that situation to where it sunk into you just watching your parents and observing what was going on to where you were like they possibly can, you know what I'm saying? Um, yes, yes and no, but there was definitely a moment, yes. Yeah. It wasn't ongoing, because you, as you grow up, you're just a kid, you're just like, oh, this is normal. Yeah. What this is, this is how we live. Yeah, like, outside of that, you don't know nothing outside of that. But yeah, as you do get older, you start to question things, because mine was quite unique, because I was raised by my grandparents. I wasn't raised by my mom. I wasn't raised by my dad. I was raised on my dad's side, by his parents. But that was a whole unique situation that had happened. So that upbringing was, uh, what was the question? Because it was kind of like two. Yeah, it was just uh, like, yeah. Like at what point were you at in your life? What age or whatever the case may be? Mm -hmm. Or what circumstances? Whenever you realized that your parents didn't have it all figured out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because 
when you, when, me being raised by my grandparents, yes, they had their own five sets of kids, but they also had more kids when they took us in. Yeah. So it was kind of like, you're dealing with all these different personalities, all these people that have different opinions that are not just your kids, but they're actually human beings that you're trying to raise. And each one, you're trying to do it right every single time. Yeah. Every time you just, all right, what I didn't do for this one, I'm going to do for this one. What I didn't, because... It's not gonna always. It's not gonna be a hundred percent the right way. You're just gonna do it the best way you can into the knowledge you have. And I'm glad you asked that, cause like, it wasn't like a oh that was a deep thought. But I'm sure there's people that have had that out there that realize that. But for me, it was a little bit more. They made sure I didn't have to think that. They made sure that I didn't have to fight over starving or whatever the case may be. But they also showed me how to recognize that when that is going on for other people. So growing up, I had friends that didn't eat until they got to school. And when they got home, they didn't eat until they got back to school the next day. It wasn't no food at house. Or they might be wearing the same clothes from last year. Or they didn't, wasn't able to get the school supplies. You know what I'm saying? But you don't know that, you don't know that's going on. That's why I'm saying this is a unique experience for everyone. But. I don't think there was an actual moment, but I did actually think about that growing up a little bit where it was just like, oh, okay. Oh, so this is my situation. And this is, but I'm not mad at that because there was a moment where, <clears throat> and I want to ask you, um, would you blame your parents? Like, would you say that you could be like, why didn't you teach me all these things? But. I had, because I had watched that on the podcast where it was like, they was asking us like, would you be mad at your parents because they didn't teach you the financial literacy or teach you how to use credit or do your taxes and all that? And there was different answers, obviously. There was some where it was like, well, today everything's more accessible in this generation, so there's no excuse. And there was some where it was like, well, my mom, she was an immigrant that came in, so she didn't know until she needed to know. And when she didn't know, she couldn't really teach me because she, she didn't speak Spanish. You know what I'm saying? She didn't speak Spanish. So how could she teach me if she's an immigrant coming in? I'm seeing these different perspectives. So I'm gonna ask you was like, was there a moment where you felt like you needed to be like, well, why didn't you teach me that? You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you teach me that? Like, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was there ever a moment like that with your mom or your dad or whoever? You know what I'm saying? Where yeah, there were, there were plenty of it was just frustrated, both like. Yeah, plenty of them were both of them. If I'm gonna be honest, mm -hmm. there was moments where, uh, <clears throat> Uh, if I'm being completely honest, well, I had to be very vocal about it with both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I actually had to sit down and have a conversation with my dad and have a conversation with my mom and just mm -hmm. ask them just from, not necessarily from a point of blaming them every single time, but it definitely yeah, came yeah, to yeah. a point to where it was just, uh, I was coming from a point of clarity. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, why didn't y'all feel the need to, you know, uh, keep us away from these type of things? Or why didn't y'all mm -hmm. feel the need to teach us this right. or put us in these type of areas or not to expose us to the type of things that y'all expose mm -hmm. us to because a lot of the times you know and sometimes if, if we're going to be completely honest and transparent with it, sometimes there's a lot of things that parents can prevent as far yeah. as the yeah. decisions that they make with their children but um, it's like at the same time you know like, as well as just not putting the full blame on them because sometimes they don't know they don't know any better mm -hmm. and sometimes they're just in a situation where they can't be as efficient as parents but at the same time I was just kind of like dang like, you know what why didn't y'all make these decisions to, mm -hmm. to keep us away from what we were exposed to right. you know because I know for us as kids we were exposed to a lot of things we weren't supposed to be exposed to right. that was, exposure is different from you bro man. like what it was Criminal activity, but it was sexualization, whatever the case may be. You know, I, I just came from a point at one point where I was angry about it, mm -hmm. where I was very uh, convicted towards my parents. And then once the uh, last part where I was just questioning, you know what I'm saying? I questioning, yeah. Went to them personally and was like, you know, like, like, like what, what was going on during this time? Like, what were y'all thinking? Mm -hmm. What was y'all mind states? You know what I'm saying? What led y'all to not make this decision or to make this decision. Yeah. You know what I'm 
I'm saying? And of course, I got it before because it was like, uh, at, at the time, I was really affected by these particular things. Like, right. Like we talked about on other podcasts, like when I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? I was a, I was a, I was a big, you know what I'm saying? I was a big kid. Like, you know, I was like, overweight for the majority of like elementary, middle school, high school, just that the third. Right. So you know, once I got into it and fitness was my thing, you know what I'm saying? I started staying on top of my my health and my my physical fitness and my physique and whatnot. You know, of course I went into them and I was just like, yo, like what like what was going on with this? Like why weren't y'all, you know what I'm saying, making sure we had healthy foods in the crib and making sure that we were exercising mm-hmm. and getting out and you know what I'm saying? We All these eating, questions. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No making answers. sure we wasn't eating, making sure we was eating fresh produce and eating more eating things that were gonna be more Because you go to school to you're like you're not trying to compare, but your brain does that. It's yeah. like why is this situation like that? And our situation is like what I thought was so normal is not normal. What, what's going yeah, on? Like, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I thought I was able, I thought I was well protected. I thought I was, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. And There's so and much. And that's where more. it comes from. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's where it comes from. It comes from just unlearning the things that you unlearning the, the things that you come comfortable with being yep. like, like for 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 instance, just just wrapping it up like. Becoming comfortable in chaos, and then growing mm. up to realize that it was chaos you were in the whole time. Becoming comfortable in chaos and comfortable in chaos, and then growing up to realize you were in chaos. Damn. So that's like growing up in darkness, and then growing up and realize once you stepped outside that cave, mm-hmm. you've seen light that you were in darkness the whole time. Yeah. So it's like growing up in an environment that's that has a lot of dysfunction and conflict. Chaos, fighting, mm-hmm. cussing, screaming is that yeah. the third uh, distance within the family. Mm-hmm. And you, since you've grown up in this, this is all you've known. You've grown up thinking this is normal. But once you get older and you find out, okay, maybe, maybe your family isn't supposed to operate like this. Mm-hmm. Kids aren't supposed to be acting like this. Kids aren't supposed to be raising themselves and going out in the streets. Yeah, and that's not the normal. But what's it's so normalized yeah. now? Kids walking on the street, <laughs> taking <laughs> care of themselves like they grown as fuck. And that's what I'm saying. With no home. So it's like once you once you get older and you build the capacity to understand, okay, this this isn't right. Mm-hmm. That's where you get to the point where you start questioning these things from your parents or from you know what I'm saying, your guardians or whoever the case may be. That's when you right. get to the point to where you question it because it's like, yo, like, why didn't y'all know this information? Right, right. Like, why didn't y'all keep us from you know what I'm saying, having to go through these things that we went through? And it's like. Uh, just putting yourself in, in in a situation where you like, dang, like, like, like if, if I had kids, I know I would have kept my kids from, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, being exposed to this or. But they probably said the same thing to themselves too, because there's pros and cons on. I guess I can't speak for every parent because I'm not a parent, yeah. and it would be dope to have a parent on here because I know plenty of young parents, older parents, but mm-hmm. there's pros and cons to the choices they make. Into do I need to discipline them this way? Do I need to pull them to the side to talk? There's pros and cons to how you choose, but you just got to know who you're dealing with. And when, as a parent, you got to know your child. Yeah. You have to know your child, I feel like. Because if you don't, you don't know who you're dealing with. It just adds more to the chaos. Because then everybody's just roaming and just on a, a, a automatic thing yeah. to where it's a cycle, a never-ending cycle. And you have a feeling where you're like, all right. And when, once you become aware of that, it's like, when does it end? How can I make it in? Do I need to separate myself from this? Yeah. Is it that bad? Do I need to separate myself from this? Or is there a way where we can figure this out? Because right. I'm sure people have tried that way, this way, and still fighting for it. Yeah. But it's crazy you bring that up, man. Yeah. I think that's why we question it, though. Yeah. It's just kind of figuring out exactly what avenue to take with Because, I mm-hmm. mean, of course... You gotta understand that once you once you do come to the point to where you realize these things are wrong or they're not supposed to be being mm-hmm. done, or just just for questioning them mm-hmm. in general, that you're kind of gonna be that person that takes a step to to break these generational curses. curses. Or you're gonna be that person <laughs> that finds that 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 issue that mm-hmm. that uh, that um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, that that finds that issue in in, in the software basically. Yeah. So where is that person. connecting happening? Yeah, like it's saying. not just this particular moment, but how does it get there? How can I not allow that to take place? Yeah. 
Then exactly. I have my kids, generationally speaking. Because, yeah, you can get all the finance, all the money you want and everything. Sure, that takes away a lot of those other responsibilities. But we're talking mm-hmm. about the actual work of exactly. raising a human being, bringing them up, um, not trying to spoil them. Are you spoiling them? In what ways are you spoiling them? You letting them get away with things? You letting them have things? It's just a uniqueness to it, man. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Life is still beautiful to me when I look at it than when I used to look at it. But yeah, I get it. You built up that resentment. You built up those questions. You build up, why is it like this? Why, 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 why? And you get flooded with all these questions with no answers. And then when you do vocally speak about it, I hope for those who do vocally speak speak about it and not have to go through what I did where it's just a, you feel like you're fighting it all the time. Yeah. They're not seeing it how you see it. You've been seeing it how they saw it. You've been in their eye. But how, when is it they going to see it in through your eye? And what I realized, nobody, I can't walk through your shoes. Yeah. It's very difficult for me to walk through your shoes. That's where I feel like there is a level of understanding with time spent, quality time spent together, um, learning a person and learning yourself and how you and this person uh, operate when you are together in that aura and that dynamic. And then when you have that whole understanding, you're still going to come down to the conclusion that you're still not going to be able to walk their shoes. Yeah. You're not. You might go through similar things, whether you was brought up in the streets getting shot at or people that go through that whole system. It's a system everywhere. Which one you want to deal with? How was you brought up? What choices did you make when your parents wasn't around and you was just like, Ooh. I heard about not doing this, but I'm going to try it. And then being at school with the fights, the terrible food, the terrible teaching, the low pay, all that plays a part into it, into that web. You know what I'm saying? Because you can find yourself going through a loop when you find out, all right, I fixed that. But why are you fixing that? You realize, damn, there's another connector point over here. Yeah, yeah, it's always going to be some shit, man. But it's but, what you, yeah. yeah. But, but with that situation, though, I do want to circle back to that, uh, about what you said as far as it being a, a constant battle. It, it, yeah. Whenever you, when whenever you, you start realizing. When you bring that up, because it can go yeah. two ways. Yeah. They will either listen, hear you out, how can we work through this, or it'll be a fighting battle. And I, that's where it went for me. But it you got to think fight. about it, though. That's, that's how it's supposed to feel. Mm-hmm. And the only reason it's supposed to feel like that is because, like I said, you got to, now what you have in this realization and you have in this conviction to understand, dang, like, this isn't how we're supposed to be raising children. Or this isn't how we're supposed to be yeah. maneuvering as a family. Mm-hmm. You then got to now be that person to make a decision. Mm-hmm. You got to make that decision between, okay, are we going to continue to just try to deal with this as best as we can? Or am I going to nip it in the bud right here, sever these ties mm-hmm. and start something new? Start right. a completely new, different wave in our family in our relationship, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever the case may be, am I going to be the yeah. person to go ahead and finally say, okay, I know this is what we've been doing. I, I know everybody's pretty much and yeah, all everybody's that. pretty much comfortable in chaos. But I'm gonna take the initiative and say, okay, let's forget forget everything we've been doing as a family from here on out, mm-hmm. and let's try doing things this way and see mm-hmm. exactly what kind of outcomes we get yeah. from doing things this way. Mm-hmm. Because obviously. Doing things like this for generation and generation and generation before this has been getting us here. Get, and where we're at right now isn't the best place for us to be. Not for kids, not for adults, not for about like anything. it's not about wiping out those set traditions or way of thinking. It's about evolving that. Absolutely. Through generations. How do you evolve that? Through time, things do change. Because yeah. you got to think about it. We're not, we're, not, we're not talking about... Let's, let's, we're not talking about getting rid of your, your auntie that's always <laughs> the talkative one at the cookout. We're not talking about getting rid of grandma falling asleep or, you know what I'm saying, getting rid of grandma that's always saying the wrong prayers. We're talking about getting rid of the fact that you have a 14-year-old daughter mm-hmm. and now she has an Instagram full of boys texting her mm-hmm. that want to over-sexualize her all the time. We're talking about getting rid of your 14-year-old son who's in high school, still mm-hmm. in school, mm-hmm. but now he wants to run the streets. We're talking about mm-hmm. getting rid of uh, the that. fact that we can only communicate within our household mm-hmm. if we're yelling and cussing and screaming at mm-hmm. each other. We're talking about getting rid of these things that aren't conducive to us 
being as effective of a family as possible. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So we're not talking about, you know what I'm saying, we got to get rid of traditions and, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying, people yeah. from set personalities. We're not no, talking, we're talking about eviscerating that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, evolving. we're talking about evolving and getting to a place yeah. to where we can still be that, but we can get better long-term outcomes. Mm-hmm. We can get better... Uh, we can get better offspring. We can get better yeah. outcomes. From, you know what I'm saying? We can get yeah. better. Because you, know you know I mean? don't want them to come up and fight that the yeah. same way you fought that. Absolutely. You want them to know you are going to be one to change this. You're carrying it still, generationally speaking, but it's up to you. How do you ch- carry that with you? Absolutely. How do you present that? What is that? How do you embody that in your way? How do you be a leader? How do you be a leader? How do you be a leader? Leader, man. You know, and, that's, and that's something that's going to take time for you to understand mm-hmm. exactly how mm-hmm. you're going to be, a, how you're going to conduct yourself, and how you're going yep. to be able to better get your point across. Because, yep. like I said, even with me taking that step in school, in work, mm-hmm. in ministry, yep. and things of that nature, just becoming a leader, it's like I gotta, I gotta figure out how I'm going to reach people the most effective way I know how. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I got I got mentors. I got people I look up to. Wow. I got people I respect. But at the same time, okay. I got my own shoes to fill. That's right. So it's like, I can't I can't lead like Pastor Stone leads. Mm-hmm. I can't lead like Principal Ferguson leads. Because that's how you know they lead. That, that's, <laughs> that's them. That's them. That's you their might shoes. pull bits and parts yeah. of that, but you still got to do it your way of exactly. leading. So it's you know like you, you gotta you gotta you gotta go through those experiences mm-hmm. and actually go through that conflict. You gotta go through yeah. that conflict within yourself and within your family mm-hmm. so that you under you put yourself in those type of pressures. Mm-hmm. Cause while you're in those pressures, that's where you figure out, okay, you know what I'm saying, even though it looks like, you know what I'm saying, we're we're going through we're going through the weeds right now. Right. Once I figure out exactly how I get myself out of this, that's how I realize exactly uh what qualities i've pulled from that that are going to make me a better leader Mm -hmm. i'm in this situation where everybody's yelling and cussing and screaming at each other what am i going to do to cut through all this conflict and get everybody to look at it from a different light to look at it from Mm -hmm. from a better light hey look you know what i'm saying hey look i know this has got you upset but if you can just listen i want to explain it to you this way look i know this Mm -hmm. has got you upset i know it's unfortunate and i'm sorry but i love you with all of my heart. Only thing I want is for us to be able to sit here, have this conversation, yeah. be peaceful, and yeah. nobody walk away with no cuts and bruises. If we yeah. can do that, I promise you it's going to have a way better outcome for me and you both, auntie. So if you're going to do me this favor mm-hmm. and just giving me a hug, I'll give you a hug. We sit here, we talk it out, no yelling, no cussing. Yeah. I promise you, that's going to be a way better outcome for me way and you better. both in the long run. <laughs> so can we please do that? She say yes. Y'all sit there talking about <laughs> damn. Now this is the way that we carry things in our family. Yes, you know sir, saying? bro. That's the so truth sorry. right there, man. You feel me? That's the truth. That's the fucking yeah. truth. When I say that, that's the truth. I mean that because it, it's how you conduct yourself through leadership. It's when true. that shit happens, it'll test you. Is you going to add fuel to the flame, to the fire? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to conduct yourself in a way to... <clears throat> Get, get that flame. Mm-mm. We don't have to. We don't need that flame. No, 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 no. Let's, 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 let's do it like this real quick. Let's, let's see the outcome of it like this. Right. What can it create? What would it lead us to? And what doors that can open for us as a family, for That's myself, right. and for you? It's a lot too, bro. Being an example. Mm-hmm. It's hard being an example. It <laughs> takes a toll, but you know what? It's well worth it because it's not supposed to be easy. Nobody's ever said it was supposed to be easy conducting yourself in that way with the morals you have, the standards you have, and the things you want to learn and things you don't know that you're going to have to eventually learn. We're here to learn. We're here to love. We're here to uh, grow and connect. That's the main reason I want to travel, like I said, is to connect. <laughs> it's one of the main connect. things it's going to take is patience. Patience. You know what I'm saying, and like, and I and I say patience because like, even even in those situations, because mm-hmm. like I said, to become a better leader, regardless, you're gonna have to go through pressure yeah. any, any other time. Yeah, you're gonna have to learn how to act under pressure because mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Where there's conflict, there's gonna be pressure regardless. And a thick amount of becoming a leader is being able to know how to deal with conflict mm-hmm. effectively. 
So, uh, you know, the your most effective way. Yeah, the, the most, most effective, way. effective way. So your patience comes in whenever you do have a situation like that, and you can show somebody. Basically, whenever whenever you conduct yourself professionally and with patience, mm -hmm. you show somebody exactly why this is the more effective way to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you're coming at them not yelling, not cussing, not screaming, not fighting, not leading with violence. Mm -hmm. And you're coming at them still being able to get your point across, mm -hmm. still being effective, still saying what you have to say. Yep. But you're not losing your mind doing it. <laughs> so if you in turn end up you're not losing compromising your mind, that, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you in turn end up losing your mind while you're talking to this person, you don't give them a reason to show pe to be patient. You don't mm -hmm. give them a reason to stop yelling. You don't give mm -hmm. them a reason to stop cussing. Mm -hmm. You don't give them a sight of what it looks like to be peaceful in this situation, yeah. no matter what it is. So that's why it's so okay, important for you to be firm. Mm -hmm on you know what i'm saying conducting yourself standing on business you know what i'm saying conducting yourself with patience love yep. Hold, holding your standards to a t basically that's why that's so important because like you got to show somebody exactly what that image looks like and if they don't have that there's no there's no reason for them to shift you know what i mean so it's like you you got to yeah you got you got to show that image of god yeah. with you're yourself, a reflection man. of that because yeah. that goes back to what you said what with and I'm going to use this as an example with Christianity and those Christians that do and those and you're going to hell. If this, is that, if that, that, that. You're not, that's off to some people because you're reflecting mm -hmm. that. But if you, like you said, if you were, uh, conduct that in an effective way that's reasonable, yet you can get your point across, yet, you know, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be different. Everyone's going to have their difference, right. opinions. But if you can conduct that in an effective way, if it's through Christianity, if it's through conversation, if it's through food, if it's through the phone, whatever, you'll get better results. You get better, results, you get better results. Every single time. Those results, man. Like I said, I still have fitness and I finish how I start, man. Like I said, I can do yeah. no fall. <laughs> Even when it comes down to Christians, man, like, and that's. And that's why just that whole conversation ticks me off for the most part, because it's a reflection of you when you. Not, I mean, not even that. It's a reflection of God. Okay, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you and when you embody that image of just trying to mm. judge, that's not who God. That's not who God is. You right, know right, what I'm right. Saying? God isn't just judgment, conviction. Yeah. And and uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Isn't um, I'm just say badgering. He has. He isn't just. He isn't just ruthlessness. You know right. what I'm saying? God okay. isn't just ruthless. You know what I'm saying? That's why they tell us God is love. God is peace. God is understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's like you you being a Christian, you're you're taking you're taking on that responsibility of being a reflection of God. And if you're doing these things mm -hmm. to where you're not showing any of God's love, any of God's grace, how do you expect for somebody to understand <laughs> exactly who God is yeah. through you? You're the, you're the yeah. messenger. You're the yeah, messenger. Yeah, especially someone that's not you know in Christianity and they want to hear you out and you have a moment to do that. You have you have, have no way of pulling somebody closer to God in that way. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like it's like it's, it's like let me use you for an example. <laughs> Wait, can I say this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I went to the Travis Scott concert and there's somebody out there with a mega microphone while we was in the lines. You all go to hell and you don't repent. You go to die. You go to British go to work. Like, bro, like. The Travis Scott concert? Yeah, the Travis Scott concert. Jeez. Out there by himself trying to give the word the message. He reading scriptures and everything. I'm like, yeah. dog. This ain't 1998 when you can stand on the corner and do that on the soap body, bro. Okay. <laughs> These kids different now. You can't send a message like no, that, no. No, I do admire his... his I, yeah, his, I admire him trying, you know what I'm saying? But Travis Scott concert ain't the place to do it. It's a tough crowd to win over. It's a, it's yeah, a tough crowd. <laughs> it's a real tough crowd. But yeah, just to use you as an example. Yeah. It's all about right. knowing your crowd. Because yeah. I remember one thing. Uh, about when me and you was talking back in the day <laughs> one thing that really had me frustrated bro you did not like fried chicken and that really hurt my soul I'm not gonna wait what you don't like fried chicken I bro? actually I don't mind it really I was just over it yeah, yeah. Really. <laughs> I actually think it's fine <laughs> yeah we are gonna try to bring him on me and all that bro no, no I don't like fried chicken I always no what got me it's not my favorite thing but it's pretty good okay yeah. 
<laughs> Maybe you need to try some Louisiana fried chicken. Oh, no, no, yeah. Like, I got good, 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 good fried chicken. Asian yeah. people make good fried chicken. I'm going to say that right now. I just don't think it's like the greatest mm-hmm. food, but like yeah. it's pretty good. Would you would you say universally though? Oh, yeah, yeah. Every culture likes chicken. Yeah. Like yeah, no, we can all right, say yeah. we like chicken though, yeah. right? Like I'm not saying like oh chicken yeah. is terrible. I'm sure if you had a bad experience, that's, Bro, I that's who your shit for. Yeah, yeah. I remember getting into a heated debate with you because you said something about fried. Chicken. Yeah, and, and, and I I don't even remember, but I was just like. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I like, I like, right. I, I eaten it even before at uh, that time. Yeah, so I was just, right. I was just like, no, I was like, was me I was just doing it. That's that's what that's what had me pressed. He said he said something about fried chicken. Uh, and he he wasn't rocking with fried chicken that much, but he yeah. loved McDonald's McChickens or something like that. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah, like, bro, what? Yeah. 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 You, you know like that patty? You know how yeah. yeah. you know yeah. crazy patty. about this? But you like the worst quality of fried chicken <laughs> ever made in the world. That's why I was so hot about it at the time. Cause I'm like, bro, what? You tell me if grandma make fried chicken, you, it ain't it, you ain't you ain't tripping off of it. Yeah, you, you heard it here finally. That's crazy. I was, <laughs> <laughs> he just yanking his hand. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, let's get to the fried chicken yeah, so, oh, 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 And now we settled it. <laughs> now we settled it. Hey, hey, it ain't no, it ain't nothing. That was just a, yeah. Let's get to an understanding real quick about this fried chicken situation, man. No, but like, but like I was saying, I was just going to use an analogy. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I was trying to get you to, 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 I guess, start eating chicken, uh-huh. or just, just to, just to, Get get a get an understanding that chicken is good. If I wanted yeah. to convince you that chicken is good, <laughs> yeah. and you were telling me that you don't like chicken at all, that you don't like fried chicken, me, if I'm always coming to you, yeah, with stomach poison, and I'm always red in the face, and I'm always mm-hmm. eating all this undercooked chicken, and you like, Man, what's wrong with you? Ah, uh, you know that you know that amazing chicken I've been telling you about. Yeah, you know I'm I'm, I'm just getting over the stomach bug. It, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't cook it. I ain't cook it all the way through this time. I got a little bit of salmonella. But hey, hey, eat, still eat the chicken though. Still eat the chicken. Still, hey, tear them wings up, mom. Tear them wings up. Did you try the Popeyes chicken but sandwich? But I, I just ain't gonna eat it until no. I until I get over until I get over the stomach bug. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you see how how much. That will get you to not eat fried chicken mm-hmm. ever again in your life. Yeah. If the guy that was telling you yeah. to eat fried chicken is always eating undercooked chicken, hyping it up, poison, hyping it up though, hyping it up, telling you how much you need to eat fried chicken, mm-hmm. but is not displaying good fried chicken results, and that is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy yeah. analogy. And that's, and that's the problem with a good amount of Christians, bro. You not you not displaying good fried chicken you're not results. Not displaying good fried chicken. And you? I'm gonna let y'all use that, bro. Good okay. fried chicken results. Okay, good fried, good fried, chicken, fried chicken, chicken results. You heard it from him first. You feel me? You heard it from him first. Good, Dang, display man. good fried chicken. Display motherfucking good fried chicken. Good fried man. chicken man. results. Man. But yeah, yeah I, don't even, I don't even remember what got us into this. <laughs> I don't either. Because I'm like, that. Yeah, he, he just got reminded because it probably hit him. Because like he told me up with that, bro. He told me up with that years ago. Because <laughs> we was in a PlayStation party. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, PlayStation yeah. party? We went from the PlayStation party to the bus. <laughs> Oh my Damn. gosh! Bro. But yeah, no, the whole time, all the way to no. ill conversation. Yeah, like he's been traveling over like four or five years. The whole time, the whole time, I thought fried chicken is fine. Mm-hmm. The whole time, I actually like it. Yeah, but you, you yeah, I just, I just, I don't know what I had going on at the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. man. It's all right though. It's all right. We know how you feel yeah. about fried chicken now. I'm like, saying it was now, then. now we know. Now we know. It was, he it was, was still pressed about it. He had to press yeah. the issue on your fried chicken. Well, I was, I was pressed back then. I'm yeah. not gonna care. He was hot. He was hot. <laughs> I was. I had my little PlayStation microphone unit and everything. I'm like, Alex, what are you talking about? Bro? <laughs> oh, the quality in that. Uh, your chickens. Your chickens. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do? <laughs> and then you got gunshots and shit going on. You playing GTA and everything. Exactly. Yeah, 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 got the game yeah, in the background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that shit, bro. I don't think fried, fried chicken. chicken is that good. How you feel about fried chicken? <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie, because I don't even eat fried chicken like that no more. High yeah. cholesterol and all that. Well, yeah. we, if we talking just fried, like obviously there's other options for you motherfuckers oh, out yeah. there. I don't like fried chicken, the texture and the skin. Nigga, get grilled chicken. Go get um, change it to peanut oil or some bullshit. That's all your fucking crying and yeah. shit. You don't want to eat no 
man. Chicken, I'm gonna eat chicken. I'm eating motherfucking chicken. Oh, yeah, definitely. Beef, eat chicken. I'll be salt I ain't gonna care. I'll be sauteing my chicken. Sauteing. Yeah, I'll be sauteing it, bro. So you be chefing it up. I'll be chefing it up, bro. So we not pulling out microwaves and none of that. Oh, no, no, no. Oodle and noodle action. We yeah, actually yeah, in the kitchen with it, okay? Oh, yeah. You in the kitchen with it, all right? right. From this man, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'll be, I'll be giving. I don't be giving my pops his place, but he know how to burn, man. He know, yeah. yeah. He know what he doing in the kitchen. So what about on the grill action? How that yeah, grill he know, action? He know what he doing on the grill, too. I'll oh, give yeah. him his flowers, and I ain't even gonna care. Yeah. But I know what he doing behind the hot stove. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he know what he doing, bro. He be teaching me the majority of that. Mm-hmm. How to saute, how to okay. make rice, and this, that, and the third. So yeah, he, he know what he doing out there, bro. Okay. I ain't gonna take away. I ain't gonna take away from his blessings. All right, all right, all right. You learning though? You oh yeah, learning. you definitely learned it. So what's your best dish that you cook? Your best meal so far that you like? Okay, this one gonna hit every time. The flavor, the texture, mm-hmm. all of that. My best dish, yeah. or the most recent, or the most recent. Shit. Or even your best, like you said. Mm. I'm a simple kind of guy though. I can go. Nah, for some. but that's the thing though. I do saute chicken well. It's just mm. like marinade. I put it in different. I just put it in different things. Like mm. when I make like some uh, arrogato chicken, mm. would I take it and make a Caesar salad with it? Would I take it, put it in a chicken pot, whatever? Okay. Case maybe the chicken gonna hit. <laughs> yeah. See how you so can utilize that. chicken in many yeah. ways, yeah. from your salad to your soup to your everything, bro. Whatever I make it out of, the chicken in there yeah. gonna hit every time. It's always gonna, gonna be crisp. So it's always gonna be seared like it needs okay. to be. It's always gonna be seasoned okay. to perfection. Like this yeah. is the third. Yeah. <laughs> you got the That's just hey man. I'm just saying no. Hey man, that's sad. I'm like a good. fool guy myself. You might be. I don't know. Don't let me. Don't let my skinny body have you fool now. Hey, bro, I'm I already. Eat, I eat. Yeah, I eat. I eat. I eat. I eat. I blaze too, but when I eat. <laughs> I, you know, you know, when they do your trip, yeah. but I got right. Yeah. And I couldn't stop eating all them snacks, but I needed some food. I'm a big food guy. I wasn't big. <laughs> I wasn't big on. I mean, yeah, I ate candy and all that growing up, like you know, Jolly Ranchers Skittles or whatever, or whatever the case may be, Snickers, whatever. But I was just big on food, man. Like, I need that food. Ain't never gonna get there. I need that cheese. I wasn't big on cheese, but I ate cheese on my pizza. It took me a while to get used to cheese. Now I'm a cheese type of guy. I've always been big on cheese. Big on cheese. Big on cheese. But that's how I've always been since I was a kid. Well, Uh it was different when I was a kid, but that's how I am now. I'm big on, like, I'm not a snacker Mm -hmm. at all, for real. But I'll eat a yeah, I'll eat a meal though. Yeah. I'm big on meals. Yeah. I am not I ain't, I ain't much of a snack yeah. for real. So, so like, you ain't finding me with no chips and cookies mm-hmm. and this, that and the third, mm-hmm. but you'll you'll find a nigga with a with a Philly steak and cheese. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, I like, I like me good. Good. Steak and cheese, steak, man. So we we, 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 we we what we putting on there, the 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 Parmesan cheese, what type of cheese we going on the, uh, the food food? steak? Yeah, what's the cheese looking like? Sheesh, that's that uh what is it? What is it? What's that cheese? I know something yeah, it's like the Parmesan cheese. cheese. Oh, the parm? Okay. Yeah, the Parmesan cheese. I mess around and put mozzarella on there. Mozzie, yeah. Two cheese it up. Yeah. Two cheese it up. Ain't nothing. Yo, have you ever tried it with pepper jack cheese on there before? No, I don't know Philly. You ever tried it with pepper jack cheese? I don't know Philly. I tried it on the burger though. Yeah, nah. It's good on the burger. It's really good on the nah, burger with the yeah, brioche bun and all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it it really me. Though, bro. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to try that. Yeah, for real. I'm, I'm good off the mushrooms, though. What? On the, on the Philly. Mushrooms? On the Philly. Yeah, I'm, I'm off. Well, on the Philly, I ain't, I ain't mad. Yeah. I'm off the mushrooms, man. Yeah. I'm not tripping right now. I have tripped before. But yeah. as food-wise. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, nah, I need to try that though. I'll probably yeah. three cheese it up. I'll probably get the palm on there. Definitely some lettuce. Throwing some tomatoes. I, I, it took me a while to get used to wanting to eat tomatoes as a kid, but I matured my palate. <laughs> I grew the fuck up. <laughs> and you know, I like, I'm, it took me a while to get on cheese, tomato. Wasn't a ranch fan. Was not. I was big on barbecue and spicy food. Spicy food care. got me. I ain't gonna care. I wasn't big on ranch when I was a kid either, but I was tearing up honey mustard and barbecue. So I ain't gonna cap I was doing that. Sweet and sour and all that. Yeah, all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you need it. No. Uh, oh, okay, so we good? Okay, yeah, yeah. It is about 8.30, yeah. though. I do need to get to wrapping. Okay, we wrap this up real quick. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, we get a little action. <laughs> yeah, man. No, no, man, man. Good talking to you, man. Like, sure. But I do, I do, I do want to get into one more thing. One more thing before we head out of here. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. for the all right for the people, let's stretch it out. We'll get, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll can stretch that. We can stretch that. Five. Five. Like just uh yeah, bro. I just want you to yeah, just I don't know, man. Just just tell me how you looking at life now, man. Just just life as a whole. Looking at it, like, yeah. Just what's what's with everything that we keep talked for the about. Future? Honestly, with future wise, I'm well connected with my patience. I'm very in tune, not connected, in tune with my emotional state, mental state, physical state. And one by one, I had to get that in line in order for me to experience the 2024 that I need to experience. And there's so much more to come. There's things that I'm looking forward to doing for y'all and for myself to uh, put out more and get that exposure. Because there's been plenty of times where I could have rolled the wave of notoriety from the time Buster Rhymes hopped on, from the time... Yeah, 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 yeah. You know I'm gonna get into that. I'll be but there was time, about that, man. Yeah, because there was a time where I could have just rolled that and whatever. But I'm not big on the notoriety. I feel like I need that organic. It was an organic moment, but it wasn't as big as the stuff that I needed to work on and everything to get me here. Um, but future wise speaking, just taking over in ways that I didn't think I could take over, man. Not like be a power hungry type of guy but be a let's do this yeah. let's do it like let's hit the gas pedal and let's go like let's go and it's that like, initiative yeah the initiative and once i got through all that work and everything and got a line it was only a matter of time for me to hit that button so once i hit that button again it was like all right let's go i'm here for sure let's rock so like we Exactly, it kind of like a vision cast. Like, okay, like, where do you where do you see yourself? I see in myself in a different space, not just mentally, but I see myself in a different space outside of that home, um, enduring new responsibilities, yeah. um, learning a lot more, yeah. but also being so much more into this moment, and even in this moment right now that I'm in. I'm very super immersed than I've ever been because I used to be so uh, disassociated in spaces. Mm. I used to be so high out of my mind, man. Just there, existing, coexisting at that. I don't even want to say existing because I wasn't existing yet. I'm talking about in that space between when y'all didn't see my face no more all the way up to last year. So a little year and a half of some change and just doing that work. But future wise is just I'd rather show y'all than tell y'all. That's the main thing. Cause there's times like you said, when I asked that discipline and motivation thing, there was times in the beginning where I depended on motivation and I was getting hints of dopamine, the hints of this. But I felt good. At least I tried and started, but actually starting and staying committed to that and being disciplined within that practice, whatever practice it may be, um, just taking those things with me and not being hard on myself like I was. I used to be very in tune with the numbers or when is this going to happen? When is this going to happen for me? All these moments, but nothing's really happening, not being satisfied. That's why I said the I need to be satisfied with the results I give. Because the results I get is what I gave out. Mm -hmm. I have so much more to give now. Because I used to take, 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 take to the, from those that I that cared about me the most outside of this. I can, I know how to separate this world. That's the issue that most creators go into. Because you got to recognize what you're getting into. And you got to accept what comes with that. So there will be a time down this road, after this, before this is released, I might doubt myself. I don't want to upload it, but I am. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a time where somebody's going to try to shut this shit down, but I'm not going to allow it to happen because I already know what's to come. So for anybody out there, for whatever you practice and whatever you do, as long as you have an idea of what to expect when... Just expect the unexpected, basically. Yeah. Because when you already accept that coming with it, that's part of the process. 
So this is the part of the process of what I'm trying to build, man. And you're helping on that. You're helping on that. Right now, this is a one, two, three percent conversation, but it's about to be a full blow conversation when it comes out. For real. I don't care if it's one eye on it, five eyes, fifty eyes, a thousand eyes, a million. It's gonna do what it do. That's why I don't really pay attention to things that I used to care so much about. So it's just about for me, just being impactful, knowing what's important, who's there and who's not there. Staying uh straight on the straight and narrow and practicing what I preach, man. Mm-hmm. Being that and embodying that. If it's through God, if it's through culture, or if it's through love, whatever the case may be. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm not asking for much from anybody because I've already taken so much. But for you to allow me in this space says a lot. For you to want me to help me out, bro, today, like, says a lot for me. Y'all helping me. I mean, yeah, I'm helping y'all, but y'all doing a lot more for me, whether you realize that or not. For real, for real. Oh, yeah, y'all exactly. really are. It's unity, bro. Unity. I'm big it's on unity. that. Most Team good. player first. Yeah. I, sur- I try to surround myself, not try, I surround myself with like-minded people like that that are team players because when you're surrounded by everyone that wants to do it for the team and not just one person that wants to do it for the team everybody's gonna win you're on the same move same stroke same game plan roll 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 that's what discipline looks like roll 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 motivation looks like (laughs) when discipline is just roll Roll, whatever pace that may be. Yeah, discipline leads towards towards a purpose, bro. And I think mm-hmm. that's exactly what you're getting. Purpose. At. You know what I'm saying? You just have a more of a defined purpose nowadays. Yeah, you got it. Pushing towards in the future. You said it. You just said what I've been trying trying to say is. Yeah. I refine and polish my purpose, bro. Yeah. On the wall, I wrote certain things that I want to get done. My purpose. I probably put a picture up of what that may have looked like. I kept that on my wall for a year straight, maybe two years, where it was in the angle to where I woke up and got out of bed. That would be the first thing I could see mm-hmm. instead of looking at my phone or whatever the case may be. Just seeing that, finding myself every day, what I'm working forward towards, refining and finding my purpose. I would pull that up. I don't know, I remember it word for word, but. I would pull that up since you brought that up. And that, uh, it was a new purpose for me. It was. I refined it and polished it. Because what, what I thought I knew, I ain't know much, man. I know I don't know everything. Once I knew I knew everything, I knew I didn't know everything. So much more to know. So much more to grow into. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'm accepting that process for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we are in a conversation, man. Thank you for that question, bro. Like, yeah, for sure, bro. It's beautiful, man. It's, mm-hmm. beautiful. it's beautiful just to see the evolution mm-hmm. from one, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Evolution. Just going through those points to where we kind of have our, our our trial and error for the most yeah. part. You know what I'm saying? The way you you start off giving out this amount of energy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You have to take, take a step back. Mm-hmm. Then you come back even stronger. Mm-hmm. Then, you know what I'm saying, sometimes we even have more fall well, we always gonna have more more failures and more mm-hmm. successes. It's gonna like, be more yeah. failures than successes. Absolutely. So it's like just going through that whole process is beautiful for me personally, because even even when we talked about uh these on previous episodes with me and you, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's just it's it's beautiful to understand exactly how to live life on life's terms for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like and living life on life's terms, living life on God's terms, yeah. is just understanding how we have to be happy with both the good and the bad it's times. Bad. It's where you look at the good times as rewards and you look at the bad times as trials. And if you look at the bad times as a trial, then you're going to be more prone to to looking at these situations where you're weak mm-hmm. and doing what you did, praying for a strength and spirit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Praying to, to keep, keep, your, your spirit. You know, keep your spirit intact. <laughs> Cause it's like you know you you're not gonna you're not gonna pray that these things go away because you need them. Yep. You need trials. You need mm-hmm. I, the, I you need that. pressure. I you need the yin and the yang. I embrace yeah. the good and the bad. Yes. Exactly. And you need to do that. So mm-hmm. it's like you're not gonna pray these situations mm-hmm. away. Go straight time. away. 
you're just gonna ask for the strength to be able to to get through these things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the most important things for people need. And that's definitely what I've seen you go through in in your situation, brother. And I'm glad you have the strength to make it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you're doing. So that's love, brother. That's love. That's real, that's real love. That's real. That's real. But yeah, man, it's, it's just beautiful to me. So. I got nothing but love for you. I got nothing but love for the situation. And you know what I'm saying? I'm always here whenever you need me or here whenever mm -hmm. we can have these opportunities to do these things. Yes, sir. You know and I will speak on my situation as well. Cause um yeah. you know, even in even in past uh, episodes of me and you, it's like uh you know, I, I was definitely on a whole nother wave. I was definitely a whole nother person whenever we talked. Right. That, you know, two years can a lot can change. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> a lot can change. So it's like, for, <laughs> me, for me, being in that type of headspace at that time, I thought I could do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was my driving force. Mm -hmm. I was the person that was telling me, hey, it's me that's getting me out of bed. It's me that's pushing mm -hmm. me forward. It's me that's getting these things done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to a degree it was, but it's like, you know, it's that God factor that played into it for me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, God is the one that's making sure everything is happening so that I can do these things. Yeah. He's making sure I still got this roof over my head, that I'm waking up in the morning, that mm -hmm. I, I got my health intact. That, the things you, know you done asked for, you already got. Exactly. He's making sure that I'm, that mm -hmm. I've already, you hit the lottery, basically. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got everything that you need to continue to prosper. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't realizing those things. That's why I excel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I couldn't see it at first, but you know, of course, with just growing in the faith and actually develop a relationship with Christ, it's like I got to the point to where, um, yeah, you know, <clears throat> where I had to find my confidence in it. Yeah. Because around the time me and you were speaking, I was extremely confident. I had immense confidence. Immense. But it was confidence within myself. Yes, I was very man. confident in the things that I could do. I was very confident in the person that I was. Yeah. But I wasn't confident in my relation in the things that were important like my relationship with Christ mm -hmm. so it's like me having those two years or that year and a half for the most part is what it's yeah. been of me kind of becoming a new person to where I'm learning what it's like to be a Christian and to grow in Christ yeah I had no confidence mm -hmm. like that was heading into that yes so it's like for me going to a point to where I've graduated high school I've learned about fitness, I've got my own car, I'm making good and a lot of what seemed like a lot of money at that mm -hmm. time, you know, and I'm, I'm getting, you know what I'm saying, I'm seeing women, I'm doing this, that, and the third, right, all right, over right, the place. Right, right. So, like, in that sense, I'm feeling like I'm on cloud nine, I'm feeling like mm -hmm. I got it made, I'm making yeah, straight A's yeah, in school, going on. like, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm pushing it, it's, but... It snuck up on you. Exactly, you know, yeah, that's it's exactly what it is, it snuck up on me, so, like, once I felt like I could I could go into developing a relationship with God the yeah. same way, it kind of took me back. I had absolutely yeah. no confidence. Yeah. In confidence in all so these other areas. areas. You see what I'm saying? No confidence in. So like I, I felt like a I felt like a kid again yeah. to say the least. Yeah. Because it's like yo like I'm I'm around all these powerful people these people that know the world like the back of their hand these people that. <laughs> know how to pray for people, these people that know how to quote scripture, these people that know how to exemplify the love of God, and I'm just sitting here like, yo, like, you know, I'm uncomfortable, because I'm like, yo, I don't know how to do none of this, like, I'm, I'm a new believer, I'm new in Christ, I'm new to this church, so it's like, you know, I know how to be me, but I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not moving with that same level of confidence, so that, that whole year, well, this whole year, you know, even though I did, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I was telling on, on the last podcast we were on, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of doing this, mm -hmm. doing this podcast, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going on my YouTube mm -hmm. channel. And I very much was, but it's mm -hmm. like, when these things came, it's like I couldn't do it with the same vision that I had at the same time. Because you had a different mindset. I was a different person. Different perception, yeah, perception of different, life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm a completely different person. Completely. So it's like, I can do it. But I gotta find a way to be able to do it, not like this person anymore, but the new person that I'm becoming. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, even even, and it's like even now I'm still learning things, but I'm a lot more confident in the person that I am now than mm -hmm. I was before. I'm a lot more confident in being a child of God than mm -hmm. just being than just being an, an average man trying to make it. In yeah. life. It's not a stream of average. It's not a stream yeah. of ego. It's not a stream of faking it. 
Yeah. It's a stream of confidence. Absolutely. So it's like when, once I was able to go through that period of one humility, go through that period of humility, <laughs> go through that period of understanding yeah. and dying to myself and realizing Jamari doesn't know everything. Jamari isn't the person that's in control. Jamari does have things that he has to ask mm -hmm. God for forgiveness for because he's not perfect. He's made mistakes. He's yep. done things that he wasn't supposed to do in his life. And I've had to go through that period to where it was tough. It was hard. It was frustrating. frustrating. It took patience. <clears throat> all of these different things. And I had to basically become a new person to where I could get that same confidence, mm -hmm. but in a new form. But in a, in a new form, basically, mm -hmm. as a new person, and you know that's that's kind of where it came from with me doing the same thing you did. I stopped having my own mind persona. I stopped posting stuff yeah. online. I stopped speaking my perspective yeah. and speaking my mind online and things. It was like a rebrand. <laughs> you know, it was a rebrand. Yeah, it was a complete new found purpose, a rebranding of self, and yeah. everything in between that. So yeah, man, it was it was just going through that whole process for me to kind of. Well, it has me at the process that I'm in now to where it's like, you know, I can do these things with confidence. And like I said, I definitely don't know everything. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I haven't read the Bible from cover to cover. I'm in my word, but it's like, you know, I don't, I don't know everything there is to know about being a Christian, mm -hmm. about who I am as a Christian. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm here and this is what my life is now. This is who I am. Now, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm willing to be able to share these things with other people show these people what this looks like and bring other people into this yeah. into this space and to experience you know uh who god is and god's love and things of that nature so it's like i have my confidence in the fact that i'm able to do it whether i know everything about it or not i just know for a fact that this is what i'm supposed to be doing this is what i'm going to do not what i'm going to try to do as we said before <laughs> you feel me <laughs> <laughs> this is what i am i am I am. <laughs> This is what I'm going on. This is, yeah, this is what my purpose is. And, you know, this is this is just what it has to be, man. So, yeah, I, I can definitely attest to you on mm -hmm. that. But just having that whole that whole rebirth of just, you know, just, just refurbishing your purpose, man. So, yeah, mm -hmm. man. Dang, I guess we was on the same trip the whole time. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I mean, it's funny because through time, I mean, you spend time away, you be alone and all that. You go through what you go through. And you don't recognize life has a funny way of you know, going right back, connect yeah. you right back to where you need to be, right here, right now, in this moment, where we all kind of went through the same thing, but we didn't know. Yeah. We didn't know. But it's good to know that, like, damn, I don't know when they went through some shit like that. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Like, you know, I can look back and be proud of that. Mm. Proud of lifting myself up every day and not wanting to, but I did. I knew eventually it was going to have to pay off. I ain't know when it was going to end. Because it felt like it was going to never end. Yeah. It was like, fuck, I've been doing this every day. Putting this work in. Mm -hmm. Facing the problems head on. Taking it. Yeah. And over like, and over. <laughs> and that's one of the most difficult parts about about growing in general. Mm -hmm. like, difficult. You know, and we can go on and on about that one all day. It's so, mm -hmm. it's so many yeah, we can go about that all day. There's so many components that play mm -hmm. into just that aspect of it in itself, man. Yeah. But yeah, bro. But it's been amazing just having you here, bro. It's been amazing. Always, man. Always. It's been good to have you here. Oh, <laughs>
to a gas station or something like that. Yeah.